Hello, and welcome to Vovork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the seventh in a nine-part video series in which we're exploring how to build a VRO lab environment on top of VMware Fusion. In this video, what we'll be looking at is how to install and configure the VRO server itself. The overall procedure that we'll be following is to deploy the VRO virtual appliance, then we're going to configure that VRO virtual appliance, and then the last thing that we're going to do, much like we did in the previous video with the vCenter server, we're going to configure our VRO server so that it automatically starts whenever we boot the host it's installed on. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to deploy the vRealize Orchestrator virtual appliance. Let's jump on into our environment here. As you can see, once again, I'm in Fusion. I have my Windows 7 VM. You don't have to use Windows 7. It just happens to be what I'm using. And what I'm going to do over in Windows is I'm going to fire up a web browser. I happen to be using Chrome. You could use another web browser. I just happen to be using Chrome. And what I'm going to do here is connect using, if I could only type, using the, the vSphere web client. So connecting using the vSphere web client, I'm going to end up logging in here in a moment as administrator. For me, it's administrator at vvork.info. Obviously, you're going to type a slightly different name. And my password is vmware1bang. I'll click the login button. Uh, in a moment here, I'm going to see a, a, a warning message about expiring licenses. Uh, just remember in in our uh, video series here, we're not actually installing any licenses into our environment. Therefore, we're using the 60-day default licenses. So, yeah, usually I'd see a warning message. Here. Well, there's the warning message. So, I'm just going to ignore that warning message. There we go. So, warning message is now officially gone. All right, so let's deploy the VRO virtual appliance. To do so, I'm going to go into Host and Clusters view. And then here, let me expand my inventory a bit. Uh, let's see, I've got two hosts. Which host do I want to install Orchestrator onto? Well, we've already got the vCenter server running on host ESXi01, and the vCenter server virtual appliance alone needed 8 gigabytes of space. So we're going to intentionally put the VRO server, which is much smaller, onto our second host. To get that started, we'll right-click the second host, and from there we will choose to deploy from an OVF template. Now, uh, we'll click Allow to continue beyond this here. Okay, so you can either use a URL to point to the OVF file. Actually, we're going to use an OVA, but um, you can use a URL or you can browse to the file if you've already downloaded it. In an earlier video, I showed you how to download it. Uh, in that earlier video, I put the file into my uh, MacBook Pro's file system, uh, not into this actual Windows VM itself, which is why things are going to look a little funky here in a moment. But let's see here. I'll click Local File, then I'll click Browse. And again, the file, I could move the file into my Windows VM, but I actually left the file over on... Uh, the, the file system of the MacBook Pro itself. So to get there, I've set up Fusion to allow me to access the MacBook Pro's file system. If I just go to Computer, uh, I set it up in Fusion so that the Z colon drive is a share folder that's pointing over to the various parts of the file system of the MacBook Pro. So I'll choose Z colon, Z colon, and uh, there we go. And I put it down into Documents. Uh, where did I put it? Documents, Virtual Machines, ISOs, VRO701. And there it is, the VRO Appliance. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, that this is an OVA file, which is nice. Everything's all in one file. And all I have to do is select it to keep this installation moving forward. Okay, so I've selected the file, the OVA file, and I'll click Next. All right, it's looking into that OVA file, checking things, making certain that everything's valid. And it, on this screen here, gives us some details about what it is we're about to install. 
Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that uh, we, we're going to have the choice between thick provisioning and thin provisioning this VRO virtual appliance. We're definitely going to want to choose thin because, as you can see here, there's a pretty substantial difference in the amount of disk space that we'll need as a result. So we'll do that a little later on in this installation. To get there, we're going to click Next. Once again, we have a license agreement, uh, end user license screen, so we'll click Accept and Continue by clicking Next. And now we need to take our time and carefully configure the, the rest of the installation. The virtual machine in which we're going to be running the VRO appliance it has a long name by default. I'm going to shorten that. I'm just going to call this VRO. And I, down below, get to decide where I want this virtual machine file to reside, which VM folder on the vCenter server. I actually don't have any uh, VM folders that I've created, so I'll just choose the data center, and that's where the VM will land. Then I'll click Next. I must select a target folder. I thought I just did. Let me try that again and click Next. There we go. Not quite certain what happened there. I probably somehow deselected it. Now, our screen here has a very important drop-down list up top. Again, for the reasons I've said before, we want to thin provision the virtual disk used by the VRO appliance. Uh, we're not using any VM storage policy, so we'll just leave this second drop-down list alone. We only have one data store on that second ESXi host. It's called Data Store 1. Um, here it is. It's the one we want. We'll go ahead and select it and click Next. On this screen here, we're asked which of these, well, there's only one, but which of these networks that the second ESXi hosts have do we want to plug this VRO virtual appliance into? Again, we only have one choice here, so we'll choose it, VM network, and we'll continue forward. Next part asks us whether we want IPv4 or IPv6. We're going to choose IPv4. And furthermore, we're going to use statically assigned IP addresses. Let's see here. Uh, continuing onwards, let me just check my notes here. So we're going to choose IPv4 and click the next button. There we go. We need to type some information in here. For instance, the root account for the VRO virtual appliance. Surely by now you know I'm typing via 101 bang. Uh, we get to decide whether or not we're going to enable SSH in the VRO virtual appliance. Again, for security reasons, by uh, I usually want to leave services turned off that you're not using, but I know ultimately I'm going to end up using the SSH service, so I'm going to go ahead and check this checkbox. You don't have to. Uh, the following is the fully qualified domain name of my VRO virtual appliance. I'm making certain that I'm typing in here the FQDN that I used over when I was setting up the, the DNS server entries. Uh, on the previous screen, you may have noticed me stuttering and stammering for a little bit. I was on the network screen, and I always want to type in the IP address and all that stuff on the, the network screen. kind of seems like the place you'd do it. Uh, I was looking on the screen. It wasn't there because it's never there. The network, All the network configuration stuff is done in Step 2D Customized Template down here under Networking Properties. So here's, here's the stuff I was looking for a few moments ago. So we need to type the default gateway that we're going to be using here. The gateway that I'm typing is the one that VMware Fusion sets up by default. We need to know the domain name of our environment. Again, I'm typing my domain name. You're going to type your domain name instead. Uh, we're going to type uh, potentially a domain name search path. I don't think I actually need to do that here, strictly speaking, because I'm not going. To, it's not like my Vero server is necessarily going to be doing a whole lot of DNS lookups, but just to be safe, I'll go ahead and type the domain name in here. Now, uh, if I wasn't working in the hotel room that I'm in right now, if I was at home, my DNS server's IP address when I'm at home is 10.0.0.100. Uh, I'm not at home. I'm in a hotel room, and for that reason, I'm going to type a different IP address here. Um, so this is a different IP address that I've typed for the domain server than earlier videos in this series. So if it helps, uh, close your eyes and imagine I'm typing the same IP address for the DNS server throughout all these videos. Okay, so continuing onwards here. Network 1 IP address. This is where I'm going to specify the IP address of my VRO server itself. It would help if I type the right IP address. 
which in the case of my orchestrator server is going to be .104. And we need a net mask. As you know, my network under VMware Fusion is configured for some net mask 255, 255, 255 .0 everywhere else in this video series, so it shouldn't surprise you that I'm going to type the same thing here. All right, we'll click the next button. And on this screen here, we have a summary of everything that we've specified during the previous screens. What I'm going to do next is click on this checkbox and then click Finish. So the checkbox says, after the installation is done, go ahead and power on the Vero server. So let me click Finish. And as you might imagine, to install a piece of software as sophisticated as the Vero virtual appliance, it's going to take a little bit of time. In order to save your time, I will speed up the video. Excellent. The installation of our VRO virtual appliance has succeeded. It's complete. It's done. Uh, we are going to do one more minor little step here, but this minor step is going to save us a lot of uh, grief. Instead of having to manually start up the VRO server every time I boot up my environment, I'm going to set up host ESXi02 so that when host2 boots, the VRO server starts automatically. Uh, this is the same process we went through in the previous video, so uh, I'm not going to go into a whole huge explanation here. I'm just going to select my second host. I'm going to go to the Manage tab. I'm going to click on Settings. I'm going to click on VM Startup and Shutdown. I'll click the Edit button. I'll check the first checkbox that says I want an automatic booting of one or more VMs here. And the VM that we want to automatically boot on when host ESXi02 boots is this one called VRO. I'll select VRO, click Up, click up again, click OK, and boom, we're done. That's it. So installing the Vero virtual appliance is pretty straightforward. In fact, uh, we've, we've got it up and running. If we could actually log into it and start using it, but in order to keep you in suspense, I'm going to break uh, from this video here. Uh, but I'll see you over in the next video, right? Because in the next video, what we're going to be taking a look at is how to actually start connecting to that Vero server that we've been spending all this time setting up. So. I'll see you over in video number eight where we're going to learn how to, to connect to the VRO server. See you over in that video.